The first rule of good data and good money is that it has physical integrity. In a good monetary accounting system, we do not want data, which is money, appearing, disappearing, or being corrupted. When this happens, the monetary system becomes inaccurate. That is going to make people unable to make efficient decisions and become poorer. And I mean poor not in the sense of having money, but poorer in the sense of having goods and services. Let's compare the physical integrity of different types of money. First, let's imagine the worst type of money we could use. Suppose we decided to use ice cubes for money. To protect the integrity of the system, we could even make a law that says it's illegal to counterfeit these ice cubes. However, this would be a terrible mistake because anybody with a freezer could add new money into the system, thus corrupting the accounting. Ice cubes would melt, causing everyone's hard-earned money to disappear. In a short period of time, everyone would start making very bad decisions and we'd all become poor. Now compare that with silver coins. Silver coins make good data, or money, because they add a lot of physical integrity to the monetary system. However, a monetary system based on silver coins is not perfect. Although it is difficult, it is still possible to counterfeit silver coins, and of course you can lose them easily. Just look at the historic Spanish price revolution that happened between 1470 and 1650, when silver poured from the New World into Europe. This caused rampant inflation and very negative effects. Wages lagged behind prices. Landowners and the rich, along with anyone that could sell something, benefited from this inflation, but for most people, the accounting system did not function properly, and people made bad decisions and became poorer as a result of it. And so even though they had more silver, they had less wealth, stuff to buy. What about paper money? Paper money is difficult to counterfeit, unless, of course, you are a central bank who owns the printing presses. In that case, it is very easy to grow the supply. Just like silver, this helps the rich and the landowners and anyone with something to sell, but not to the normal people. Paper money has much less physical integrity than metal money, and it is certainly not a perfect currency. Now let's take a look at Bitcoin. You may think that Bitcoin cannot be counterfeited, but in fact, Bitcoin mining is counterfeiting. Counterfeiting is necessary to make Bitcoins work because the operation of the servers that hold the public ledger depends on this counterfeiting, so-called mining, to pay for the operations. It is also possible to lose Bitcoins. You may work very hard for your Bitcoins and then lose them, and sorry, you're not going to be compensated for the value that you created in the system. Okay, now let's take a look at CloudCoin, which was designed to be the perfect money. The number of cloud coins are fixed in a 3-byte integer. This means that there are 16,777,216 notes per network. The number of cloud coins never increases or decreases. However, if the value becomes too high, cloud coins can be multiplied so that every coin then becomes many more coins. Because every coin is multiplied at the same time for the same amount, this money inflation is proportional and does not cause the money system to provide inaccurate information to its users. Instead, multiplication benefits the users by keeping the unit of account at a usable value. Cloud coins are designed so that the doubling or multiplying of cloud coins also doubles the infrastructure and the fault tolerance of the entire system. Now let's compare the physical integrity of bitcoins to cloud coins. In order for bitcoins to work, there must be a public ledger that is stored on somebody's hard drive and is available to the public. But what if somebody accidentally deletes the public ledger? Well, to prevent this from happening, the public ledger is mirrored or duplicated on many computers and anyone can download it and have it on their own computer. This gives bitcoins physical integrity because storing the same data on separate computers protects it from loss. But what if someone was to tamper with the information? They could change the row that represents their total bitcoins and make it bigger. This is where the blockchain comes in. To stop corruption, every transaction is recorded and encrypted, and these encrypted transactions are added to a chain. This requires a lot of computer processing power and electricity to encrypt, but it works, and it allows the physical infrastructure to be paid for. But there are some vulnerabilities to Bitcoin's physical integrity. First, Bitcoins require encryption, and it is not quantum safe. When quantum computers become widely available, in a very short period of time, Bitcoins will be hackable, first by governments and then by hackers. When this happens, Bitcoin is through. The second vulnerability 
is that Bitcoin's infrastructure is paid for by Bitcoin miners, or counterfeiters. As time goes along, it is becoming harder and harder to make money mining Bitcoins, and this puts the entire infrastructure at risk as less people provide these computers to store the public ledger. Another problem is that Bitcoins use a blockchain that is growing. Right now it is at 100 gigabytes. Who knows, with more accounts and more transactions, we may see it grow to a terabyte in just a few years. If the blockchain is too big to fit on a hard drive, this also threatens the physical integrity of Bitcoins. Cloud coins, on the other hand, do not depend on encryption. Instead, the data is divided or shredded into data clouds all over the world that are managed by completely independent administrators. But what if one of these administrators decides to give themselves cloud coins by altering the records? Well, because the data is spread out over 25 different data clouds, a rated administrator could only take control of 1 25th of a cloud coin. This would be instantly detected and would cause them to be replaced immediately. Rate administrators make their money by recovering lost coins, so anything that they do that causes the value of cloud coins to decrease would be self-defeating. Rate administrators are highly incentivized to keep the value of cloud coins up, and that means keeping the money true. Well, what if a government or hacker was able to obtain the data from the rate of servers by force? Well, the problem is that once they are detected, the rate of clouds are replaced. The rate is designed so that all the information about the cloud coins are stored on the cloud coins themselves. During the proof of concept test of the RADA, one of our RADA administrators and a good colleague of mine was found dead at his computer, taking the data with him. But just like theorized, his RADA cloud was replaced and the cloud coins were repaired. Unfortunately, his death proved that our system works. In conclusion, when it comes to physical integrity, cloud coins are the perfect currency. Because number one, the amount of cloud coins never grows disproportionately, and they cannot be counterfeited, mined, or cracked by quantum computers. Number two, the amount never decreases. They cannot be permanently lost. And number three, the infrastructure is a permanent data store that is globally dispersed, self-healing, and self-funded. Unlike Bitcoin, there's no reason why the RADA couldn't last forever.